Hi, I'm Elena. Thank you for watching. Today it is TBR time. I've got my TBR board. I've got my Aldi quarter. I've got a chalice. All the necessities. I'm using my beautiful TBR game board to pick all the books that I'll be reading in August. We're sitting at my reading journal hutch where I work on my reading journal videos and I have my July books behind me, all the books that I've read so far in July. And I am ready. I am in a reading phase right now. I feel like the summer is always like that for me. I know fall is a big reading time for a lot of people, but for me, it is the summer. So I am psyched to see what's going to be on my TBR for August. Happy Leo season, by the way, to all my fellow Leos out there. Aaron and I are both Leos, so you can expect a birthday haul coming soon. But for today's video, I'll just go ahead and explain how the TBR board works if you haven't seen one of these videos from us before. So this is my board. Oh God, how do I explain this every time? All right, so the board has five rows. Each row has 10 cards. The cards have scratch off stickers. Behind this scratch off sticker is the name of a book that's on my TBR. I have a random number picker on my iPad and I'll screen record it choosing each number, one through 10, and that will determine which card I pull off of each row. And I'll go through each row twice until I have 10 cards. Then I'll scratch off the sticker with my Aldi quarter and it will reveal the book I'm going to read. Now. When I started this TBR game, it was organized on this board. The first and third rows were physical books in my physical TBR. The second and fourth rows were a series that I was in the middle of. And the last row was prompts. That has gotten a little mixed up since then. <laughs> so it's like generally speaking still organized that way, but it, it might be a little mixed up by now. It's hard to tell. Okay, so most of the cards are still purple, which is the first batch of cards that I made for this TBR game back in March. And some cards are pink, which means they've been added more recently. I do read books that are not chosen by the TBR board occasionally. I did a bunch of mood reading in July and in April, Aaron's puppy chose my TBR. So some of these cards, when I scratch them off, are gonna be books that I've already read. If and when that happens, I have a cool little backup plan. The chalice. In this chalice are scratch off cards that have books that were recommended by our viewers. Thank you so much for your recommendations. If you gave us one, I'll go ahead and put everybody's name on the screen right now who sent in a recommendation. Sorry, Aaron. Please leave more recommendations in the comments of this video. I will also put up a community text post the next time we film the TBR board so that I can get more recommendations from you guys. Those are the best. I mean, there's nothing better than reading a book that your friend recommended to you, am I right? So I'm sure we'll get a couple of these as well. And even if your recommendation is not picked in this video, it could be in the next one. I'm gonna leave the cards in there until we get through them all. Okay, without further ado, let's get into it and see what the books are. Okay, card number one. A really dramatic animation. Okay, I'm into it. We got number nine. So book number one is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I am on the third book in this series, which is Cytonic. Card number two. Six. Okay. If you saw the last TBR game video, I drew like all pink cards. So I'm hoping I get through some more of the purple ones this time. Book number two is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Card three. Eight. Book three will be continuing the Inheritance Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. I'm on book two, which is The Kingdom of Gods. Card number four. We got five. A pink one. That's fine. It's our first pink one. Okay, book four. I drew the Ever King 
but I have already read this on Aaron's recommendation. So I'm going to sub in a viewer recommendation for this one. Let's see what we get. Okay, I got the Lonely Hearts Book Club by Lucy Gilmore. This was recommended by MB Bertram 3605. Thank you to you for this recommendation. Card number five is 10. Book number five, I got the prompt for a queer lead or main character. Card number six, I'm starting at the top again. We have eight. Book six, I got The Burning Kingdoms by Tasha Suri. I should be on book two, but put a pin in that. I have something to say about that. We'll come back to it. Card number seven is 10. Book seven, Beach Read by Emily Henry. How have I not read this yet? Card number eight. Also 10. For book eight, we have Thorn by Intizar Kanani. Number nine. One. Book nine. I pulled Daisy Jones and the Six, but I just read this. I've already read it. So I'm again pulling a viewer recommendation. And I pulled Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger. This came highly recommended by several viewers. And for the last card. Two. And the final book of the August TBR is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Okay, I've pulled the 10 books. I only own physical copies of about half of these. So let's do a little shop with me real quick and go get the books I don't yet have a physical copy of. Then we'll come back here. I will talk you through each book, give you a little bit of background, what they're about, who recommended them, you know, and then we'll wrap things up. I think I'm going to try checking my local used bookstore first, but if we can't find them there, then Barnes & Noble it is. Let's go do some book shopping. Okay, it is a little while later. I've got all the books here ready to go. I'm gonna go through them one by one and tell you what they're about. Okay, starting things off, I will be continuing the Skyward series by Brandon Sanderson. This is his YA science fiction series. It is not Cosmere, and it's the first non-Cosmere works of his that I've read. I'm loving them so far. I've already read the first two and two of the novellas. So next on my list is Cytonic, the third book. I don't wanna spoil anything for you, so I'll tell you what the first book, Skyward, is about. In Skyward, humanity is trapped on a planet called Detritus. We are being kept there by an unknown alien species that the humans call the Krell. And anytime we try to advance our society and escape, I'm saying we, cause we're humans, they're humans. Every time the humans try to escape, the Krell like shoot them down and they're trapped on this planet. Spensa is our main character and she has like a little bit of a chip on her shoulder, something to prove because her father was branded a coward because he seemingly abandoned his squad in the middle of a Krell fight. So she's trying to clear his name by becoming a pilot herself and prove that their family is not just cowards, you know. I really, really enjoyed book one, even though this series is YA, the stakes are high, so I definitely think any age reader would like it. So yeah, excited to continue that series. 
Next, we have Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This has been on my TBR for years. I'm pretty sure that this is Katie from Katie is Reading. I think this might be her favorite book. I've heard it's amazing. It gets such good reviews and I've been dying to read it for so, so long. So I'm really psyched that it finally got picked. It says, the dream chooses the dreamer. Laszlo Strange, war orphan and junior librarian, hey, has been obsessed with the mythic lost city of Weep for as long as he can remember, but it would take someone bolder than he to cross half the world in search of it. Something tells me he's going to cross half the world in search of it. <laughs> this is supposed to be like a beautiful, mythical fantasy tale. So that is next on the TBR. Okay, now look at this ginormo book. When I bought this on Barnes & Noble, I ordered it online and I did not realize that it was all three books in one forming this gigantic book. I thought I was ordering like a box set. <laughs> so... That's my bad. I think I will order the next book on Kindle and read it on my Kindle because this just seems annoying. Like this is too, too chonky. Anyway, this is the Inheritance Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. I read the first one a couple years ago and then just kind of stalled and never went back to it. But I feel like I remember it very well because I recommend it to people all the time. So I'm ready to jump back in with the second book, which is called The Broken Kingdoms. So that is book two in the Inheritance Trilogy. Book one is called The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms, and it's about a girl whose mother has died under mysterious circumstances. And she gets called to the main city where the ruler of the Hundred Thousand Kingdoms lives and his court. And she gets surprise named a potential heir to the kingdom. This is a total shock to her and it puts her in somewhat of like a deadly competition situation against the other potential heirs who have all been raised from birth for this, you know? So she's an underdog. This is one of those romanticy stories with mischievous gods running around, messing with everybody. There's political intrigue, lots of magic, and there is romance. It's, it's very much romanticy in my opinion. So that will be book three on my list. Book four is The Lonely Hearts Book Club by Lucy Gilmore. This came highly recommended from one of our viewers. Thank you for your recommendation. This sounds like it's going to be a treat. It's like a cozy mystery situation that revolves around a book club. It says everybody has a reason to get lost inside a book. Totally agree. Sloane Parker lives a small contained life as a librarian, another librarian book, in her small contained town. She never thinks of herself as lonely, but still she looks forward to that time every day when old curmudgeon Arthur McLaughlin comes to browse the shelves and cheerfully insult her. Their sparring is such a highlight of Sloane's day that when Arthur doesn't show up one morning, she's instantly concerned. And then another day passes, and another. Anxious, Sloane tracks the old man down only to discover him all but bedridden and desperately struggling to hide how happy he is to see her. Aww. Wanting to bring more cheer into Arthur's gloomy life, Sloane creates an impromptu book club. Slowly, the lonely misfits of their sleepy town begin to find one another, and in their book club, they find the joy of unlikely friendship. Because as it turns out, everyone has a special book in their heart and a reason to get lost and eventually found within the pages. That does not sound like a mystery at all. Maybe I had that mixed up. Maybe this is just a feel good, heartwarming tale situation. I guess we'll find out this month, but it sounds so cute. Okay, next I drew a prompt for a queer lead or main character. And I think it's time, guys. I think it's time for me to read Heartstopper. I already own like four out of five of the books in this series, but I haven't read any of them yet. It's such a popular series. I hear so much about it. People seem to love it. So it's about time for me to read it. It is a graphic novel, which I'm not always into, but I think for this story, it'll actually be really cute and help me visualize the characters. So this is about Charlie, a high-strung, openly gay overthinker, and Nick, a cheerful, soft-hearted rugby player, and they meet at a British all-boys school. How cute is that? I think it's a boarding school even, which like, you know, classic. I know this was turned into a series on Netflix too, so maybe I'll check that out at some point after I read it, of course. Okay, the next card is for the Inheritance Trilogy, which is a series that I started a few years ago and like two months ago, the last time I filmed a TBR game video, I drew this series and I was like, okay, I'm on book two, here we go, let's read it. And then I realized that I did not remember anything 
that happened in book one. So here's book one, The Jasmine Throne. I'm just gonna start over because I feel like I wouldn't be doing the series justice if I jumped to the second one when I don't remember what was going on. I couldn't remember who was who. You know what I mean, we've all been there. So I'm gonna go back and reread The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. This is an epic fantasy series. It's about a princess and a handmaiden who have forbidden magic. There's some romance going on, lots and lots of deep political intrigue. It says, trapped by her brother within the crumbling walls of an ancient temple, Princess Malini dreams of vengeance. Forced to disavow her birthright and her power because of her past, a maidservant Priya dreams of freedom. In a world beset by wild magic and turbulent uprising, their destinies will become irrevocably tangled. Together, they will set an empire ablaze. I remember that I loved this book, so whatever, let's reread it. Next, oh my gosh, this is perfect for August, don't you think? Beach Read by Emily Henry. I shopped this off of Aaron's bookshelf. <laughs> as you saw in the haul footage. Because Emily Henry is Aaron's favorite author, and she's been trying to get me to read this one for so long. So I'm psyched. I'm sure I'm going to love this. I really liked the other two Emily Henry books that I've read so far. And this one is like, I feel like a classic Emily Henry. It even gets referenced in my favorite contemporary romance book of all time, Funny Story. So yeah. This one is almost definitely going to be a five-star read. It's about Gus and January. It's kind of an opposites attract romance, some forced proximity action because they are staying in neighboring beach houses and they're both writers who are struggling with writer's block. That's all I know so far, but yeah. Okay, next we have Thorn by Intizar Kanani. I don't know much about this at all, but the cover has just intrigued me for so long and I have it on audiobook, so that's why it was on my TBR. I picked up the audiobook version of this some time ago, and I'm excited to learn more. Let's read the back. It says, a princess with two futures, a destiny all her own. Princess Alira, Alira, has always longed to escape the confines of her royal life her cruel family, and her unwilling betrothal to the foreign Prince Kestrin. When a mysterious sorceress, ooh, robs Alira of both her identity and her role as princess, Alira seizes the opportunity to start a new life for herself as a goose girl. As a goose girl? What is a goose girl? It's not explained, at least not in the back. It says, but Alira soon finds that Kestrin is not what she expected. The more Alira learns of this new kingdom, the pain and suffering its people endure, as well as the danger facing Kestrin, the more she knows she can't remain a goose girl forever. No, I dare say you can't. I'm guessing she falls in love with the Prince Kestrin, but I'm dying to know what a goose girl is. <laughs> so this should be fun. Okay, next I have Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger. This is like a middle grade YA book, which I can honestly get down with, especially when you have a huge TBR stack. I find that something that's geared towards a younger reader can be a fast read, a good palate cleanser. So I think I could be really into this. And this is also a viewer recommendation. And it was recommended by multiple people emphatically. Like people were commenting going crazy over this book, okay? So there must be something special about it. The viewers who recommended it are AEN1083, Josephine661, and Rizzy Dizzy 13 So thank you to you three for recommending this book. I'm seeing on the back that this is a long series. <laughs> I wonder if I will actually end up reading all of them. I mean, if it's good, I will. Not this month though. So here's the back. 12-year-old Sophie Foster has a secret. She is a telepath and has a unique ability to hear the thoughts of everyone around her, something that she's never known how to explain and has made her an outcast even in her own family. But everything changes the day she meets Fitz, a mysterious boy who appears out of nowhere and also reads minds. She discovers there is somewhere she does belong, and staying where she is will put her in grave danger. In the blink of an eye, Sophie is forced to leave behind everything and start a new life in a place that is vastly different from her own. Sophie has new skills and rules to learn, and not everyone is thrilled with her homecoming. There are secrets buried deep in Sophie's memory, secrets that other people desperately want, would even kill for. Dun dun dun, okay. This should be a fun little fantasy adventure. And bringing it on home, From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I 
can't believe I have not read this yet because it sounds like everything that I like <laughs> in a book. On the inside dust jacket, it says, Captivating and action-packed from Blood and Ash is a sexy, addictive, and unexpected fantasy. Perfect for fans of Sarah J. Mass and Lara Thalassa. Okay, I mean, hello. A maiden, chosen from birth to usher in a new era, Poppy's life has never been her own. The life of the maiden is solitary, never to be touched, never to be looked upon, never to be spoken to, never to experience pleasure. Ooh, ooh. Waiting for the day of her ascension, she would rather be with the guards fighting back the evil that took her family than preparing to be found worthy by the gods. But the choice has never been hers. I know a lot of people are like obsessed with this series, so I'm ready to see what all the hype is about. I will probably be reading this one first in August and I will be sure to report back. Let's find out. Is this as good as everyone says it is? Okay, that is the TBR for August. Pretty ambitious, I think. If I don't get through every single one of these, then so be it. But I I don't know. I mean, I think I will. I always think that at the beginning of the month, though. <laughs> I'm always like, yeah, I'm going to read 20 books this month. Let's just see. Let's see how it goes. If you have read any of these books, let me know in the comments if you think I'm going to like them or not, if you liked them or not. And definitely leave recommendations for me for my next TBR game video. I love reading stuff that you guys have suggested. I mean, it's just the best. Like this video if you liked it and please subscribe to our channel. We super appreciate everybody who subscribes. It means so much to us. So thank you again. And until our next video, see you soon.